Welcome, everybody, and, and thanks for being with us today as we talk a little bit about what is new with SAS certification and maybe a little bit of what has, uh, has been around with SAS certification. You might be familiar with some of that already. Uh, today, your presenters will be myself, Matt Chicatano, and uh, Becky Gray. Becky Gray is a senior certification exam developer here at SAS, and I manage the global certification team for SAS. Welcome, everybody, and uh, hi, Becky. Uh, glad hi. to have a chance here to to talk a little bit before we get into our presentation about uh, 2020 and, and and what that meant to us. There were a lot of changes in, in how we we live and and how we work in in 2020. And while we're getting into SAS Global Forum, here we are digitally again. Uh, uh, you know, not live together. I hope that happens soon. But um, in the meantime, I just thought we could talk a little bit about those changes. What anything stand out to you in, in certification or or learning uh, about the 2020 year? Yeah, um, I got to say, Matt, that uh, one of the things that was um, really surprising to me is once you know we had had a de declared pandemic, global pandemic, um, the drop off that we saw at our testing centers globally, and the fact that we were already offering our candidates the ability to uh, test online from the comfort of their home. That really um, saved us um, because and saved our candidates. And I thought it was great. We were able to make that pivot pretty quickly. There were some growing pains with it, but uh, we were able to pivot, pivot quickly and allow our candidates to still be able to test at home. They didn't have to give up, you know, getting certified in 2020 because we weren't able to allow them to go to a testing center. Yeah, that would that was huge, and uh, you know I think we went from about eight percent to eighty percent, and it felt like overnight in terms of the the volume of folks that were were moved from testing in brick and mortar to testing in a an online environment, and 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 that's a really a big deal. And um, it didn't not that it didn't come with some growing pains, but uh, right. yeah, to, right. To me, uh, the biggest thing that stood out was when we talk about uh, training and we talk about certification and credentialing was really the shift in folks from to, to the growth mindset and looking to upskill uh, in, in, a, in a brand new digital marketing place, right, where we're all uh, interacting virtually and doing all of those things. And um, what that said to me and what I found was that SAS is, is, is truly a resilient company. Um, and I think it was Indeed.com last year actually said that job postings went up uh, when we talk about SAS skills, about 31%. So in a year yeah, when when sure a lot did. of folks were struggling, a lot of folks were out there looking to upskill and, and SAS really met that need for a lot of folks. And what we do here in certification helps them uh, to, to meet that need and to fill those, those jobs that are out there in the marketplace. So uh, that's exciting stuff in a down year to be able to say that we did some really cool things. And I look forward to telling everybody today about all of those things that we've done and talk a little bit more about online proctoring and some other things. So Becky, thanks for joining to me today. And if you're ready to get started, I am too. Yeah, let's get going. Let's do it. First, we wanted to kick things off and, and just talk a little bit about overview of what the SAS certification program is and answer that question for you of, of why get certified. What's why am I gonna need to do that? And, and what's the, the value of, of getting certified? So the SAS Global Certification Program is a professional industry recognized certification program. We validate important SAS skills and knowledge through certification exams in various formats. And we expand, through doing that, we expand the global pool of individuals who have SAS skills. And in doing that process, we provide value to the candidates and ultimately those employers that those candidates go to work for. So since the beginning of the program in 1999, SAS has certified just shy of 163,000 certifications uh, out there in the marketplace. And in that 21-ish year history, uh, SAS has shown growth year over year in about 19 of those years. So the program has been around, it's a storied history, and we continue to grow even in challenging times. As I mentioned, there's an incre increasing global presence that we've had in SAS certification. You can take a look and maybe find yourself there on that map. Where do you hail from? And you can see how the growth in certifications has expanded globally over time. So let's talk about that why. Why do folks decide to pursue certification? 
The data you're seeing on the screen now or the information that you're seeing comes from a Pearson View uh, survey. Pearson View is the test center uh, provider where you would ultimately go to take a test center or take a, a certification exam at a testing center, or they also deliver our exams online. If you take online proctored exams, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later in the presentation. Uh, but they do a, a survey out there in the marketplace of not just SAS certified individuals, but anyone taking an information technology or an IT certification um, out there in the world. And they find that this, the, the candidates responding to that survey uh, note a number of different reasons for why they chose to pursue a certification. One of the big ones is salary increase. Many folks have, have seen that uh, pay off for them. Greater self-confidence, applying those skills to real world situations or real work situations, higher quality output, and increased job satisfaction as well. And why get certified beyond training? Why is training sometimes not enough? Well, a lot of folks mention that certification gives them professional credibility with those that they interact with on the job. Certification helps people to better see how different concepts are connected. So not just learning one particular concept, but putting that together, putting all of that training together to pass that certification exam, making them more valuable to their employer. So you can see that a lot of folks do get a strong benefit from those certifications that they've acquired from SAS. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about the SAS certification program. We're excited to, to once again be back on the certification or the CERT Magazine uh, annual salary survey. This year, SAS was featured, coming in with a base salary of around $99,920 is what uh, the average salary is for someone holding a SAS specialist in base programming. And then we were lucky enough to have them do a deeper focus into SAS certifications uh, to find out what folks uh, that took the certification or took the certification survey coming from SAS had to say about SAS. First, a few very interesting nuggets of data that we pulled from the that they pulled from the respondents coming from SAS. One of those things is that 61% of the certification holders that held a SAS certification responded to the survey are women. And we're really proud of that, uh, as well as folks almost 47 or a little over 47% were between the ages of 25 and 34. And both of these things, I think they referred to them um, outside of the article as, as unicorns in the IT certification world. And we're very proud of that. We're very proud of diversity here at SAS. We're very proud that uh, that many women partake in our program. We're also proud that we are training the next generation of the workforce with a lot of those folks coming uh, directly out of school. Uh, in that 25 to 34 age, age range. Also, in a challenging times when a lot of folks are uh, reskilling or, or thinking about uh, their, their jobs or are unfortunately maybe unemployed, uh, a very strong number of 96.8% of SAS certified specialists do have a full-time job where they put that credential to work. Now, individually, the, this is the breakdown of what certification resulted in for a number of individuals. They were given the opportunity to agree or disagree with a number of statements. So when asked if their certification resulted in greater demand for their skills, you can see a very strong majority agreed with that statement or strongly agreed with that statement. You can also see that there was an increase in problem solving skills for a very strong majority, uh, almost 75%. Incre increased workplace productivity. So for those of you looking to employ folks who have SAS certifications, uh, there's a lot of evidence out there that they uh, are very productive and very efficient and effective once they've earned that certification from SAS. So now I'm going to hand it over to Becky Gray, and she's going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the credentials we have to offer. Hey, thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we um, offer over 30 different certification credentials that cover a wide range of subject matter areas and they include our programming credentials which are the associate specialist and advanced professional levels. We offer uh, credentials in BI and analytics, data management, advanced analytics, administration, we have jump credentials and then we also have partner certifications which are restricted to just people who are part of our partner community. 
And when it comes to taking a look at our programming credentials, which are our most popular credentials um, and regarding those, you might wonder which credential happens to be best for you. And we have put together a very handy comparison chart that compares all three credentials and it allows you to see the difference between the associate, the specialist, and the professional level credentials. And you can find that chart by going to our certification site and selecting any of our programming credentials in order to find out more. Back to you, Matt. Sure. So we'll talk a little bit about what the future holds. And in order to do that, we can we'll look a little bit at, the, at some history uh, of, of what we've released in the, the last couple of years as well, for those of you that, that might be new to the program. First, if you're not familiar with SAS VIA, after uh, all of the conversation that's going on with SAS Global Forum, uh, I would imagine that you are. But SAS VIA is a cloud-enabled in-memory analytics engine that provides quick and accurate and reliable analytical insights. And when SAS VIA is integrated into your SAS platform, it's going to provide you with fast processing for huge amounts of data, allow you to do complex analytics, including machine learning and deep learning and artificial intelligence. Also, it, it has a standardized code, code base that supports programming in SAS and, and other open source languages like Python, R, Java, and Lua. It's also provided uh, support for the cloud or on-site or hybrid environments. So it deploys seamlessly into any infrastructure, however you're set up um, there at your organization. And more and more customers are integrating SAS via into their existing platform as they look to the future. And in certification, we're looking towards the future as well by building new exams to support learning in SAS VIA. So you can see over the past two years, we've released a number of exams on SAS that are covered in SAS VIA. So we have a more technical exam where we talk about VIA administration, machine learning, forecasting and optimization, computer vision and natural language processing. And those three come together to uh, be combined as the AI and machine learning professional certification that we offer. So passing those three exams awards that certification. And we also have certifications available in visual analytics as well as visual statistics. So let's look a little bit about the future and what this year holds. Again, in the VIA space, we'll be coming out with a VIA programming exam that will be brand new this year. We expect to release that sometime in the first half of the year. I should say it's actually two exams, so we'll have uh, exams at both the associate level and at the specialist level. And I should say that all of these timelines uh, are subject to change, but for now we feel pretty confident that in the first half of the year we'll have programming exams come out for VIA. Next would be a foray into the model ops space. Uh, we hear a lot about DevOps and model ops in at a number of organizations these days. And we're going to look at model ops, where we're combining some of our, our existing courses with some brand new course materials and looking at being able to take that model ops and take models and put them into production in a corporate environment. And uh, we think that that's a huge skill that's going to be very much in demand. And so we'll have that certification out sometime this year. A few other changes to the program. We'll be retiring the programming Delta exams at the end of Q3 of this year. Uh, the programming delta exams were designed to take candidates from uh, an older version of these uh, SAS 9 programming certifications to the newer versions. And the newer versions are performance-based tests. And so we built a bridge that would help to cover the content that was um, a delta between the older version and the newer version. There wasn't a lot of volume in those certifications. Many people either took the brand new ones or they were brand new to the program, uh, but we will be replacing or excuse me, retiring that uh, at the end of Q3 this year. And also the big data professional, which makes up a portion of the data science certification. If you're part of the data science certification track, um, we will be retiring that exam at the end of August this year. And we do have a replacement for that exam, which has been out in the field for some time now, and many people have started to take that exam as well. Uh, we kept the big data professional available for folks that had already been studying or for some of the folks uh, internationally that were still taking those courses. Uh, but now we are going to replace that with the data curation exam, which is out there and available uh, and has been for quite some time. And lastly, we continue to expand and, and uh, try to uh, cater to those uh, speaking any language or not being an English uh, native English speaker. And by doing that, we've already started to translate a few exams into Japanese, 
that had not yet been translated into Japanese or exams that had been updated and then update uh, translating those updates or those revisions into Japanese as well. So those are what's slated for the rest of the year. And of course, we're always adding new things as we go. Let's talk a little bit about how we prepare for some of these exams. We'll take, get back to Becky for that. Hey, thanks, Matt. So when it comes to exam prep, uh, we've really got you guys covered as far as being able to um, offer you a, a wide variety of resources that you can use to help prepare yourself to sit one of our exams. Um, if you go to our website, once again, I can't emphasize that enough, uh, sas.com slash certify, uh, you'll see that we for every single credential that we offer, we provide um, you information on training, the exam content guides. Uh, we also um, offer links to different books that might be uh, useful. We offer sample questions, and then we also offer, offer um, practice exams uh, for all of our credentials. And um, also wanna make sure that you check out um, our YouTube channel. Uh, my colleague, uh, Mark Stevens, has produced a number of excellent YouTube videos, um, and this one's highlighted here, the four tips for SAS exam prep, but he also offers a number of different videos that are just excellent um, for helping to prepare for some of the programming credentials. So I definitely think you should uh, check those out. Um, with regard to the practice exams for our credentials, we do offer a number of practice exam um, uh, that are free and they're completely free of charge. All right, um, those free practice exams, um, there's the website for those up at the top. And um, notice that um, we've got free practice exams for all of our programming exams, the associate, the um, specialist and the advanced, plus we have some other free practice exams for several of the other exams. We offer practice exams for other credentials, but there is a nominal charge for some of those exams. But you um, can find the links to the practice exams, once again, off of our main web website. And then with regard to webinars, we offer a webinar series and we've been offering a webinar series for the last two years and we do four webinars a year, once a quarter, and we have a website for those. We just got done in February of this year um, doing a really great webinar on the Certified Associate um, Programming Fundamental Certification, and I highly encourage you to uh, watch that. All of these webinars are available on demand, and they cover areas like certification basics, programming, advanced analytics and data science. We have some on BI and analytics, and then we have one on data management. And these webinars are evergreen, and they're a resource that you can um, get to once again off of our main certification page. And we also make a link of the link of those webinars available off of our um, certification community site. And with that, Matt, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Great. Thanks, Becky. So we talked a little bit, if you caught the intro and Becky and my conversation about uh, things that have changed in, in the world in the last year, and I'm sure you're all, all aware of those. And as we go more virtual and, and into a more digital world, uh, we've seen a lot of changes here in certification. And I mentioned uh, that we went from roughly 8% of our, our certification exam volume being delivered online to uh, close to 80% of that volume when the pandemic hit roughly a year ago uh, in the March timeframe here. So we we still offer all of these these methods and right now a lot more of the SAS location or uh, on-site certification testing events, um, they're starting to rebound. So there's not quite as many of those as, as there once were, but those are starting to come back as we see things starting to open up here in the world. And a lot of the Pearson View uh, authorized testing centers are beginning to come back online. But as we've also learned, a lot of the changes uh, don't seem to be going away. So we will continue to offer online testing from your home or an office environment through a Pearson View system called OnView. And there were a little bit of, uh, of growing pains in for Pearson View even when they were kind of all of a sudden uh, overnight um, 
they moved from a more traditional testing center volume to on view testing volume um, and that just uh, increased exponentially uh, we've gotten a lot of that under control and we have see fewer and fewer technical issues on a regular basis so that's been improving they've been putting a lot of investment into the platform in order to make sure that it's uh, stable and ready for you to test uh, and really, you can test from any quiet private location. They've done some things in terms of how much office cleanup is required in order for you to go ahead and, and take a test. And we do offer all of our exams for online proctoring. So any exam that you could take in a testing center, you can also take online proctored. Uh, you'll be monitored through your webcam and over your microphone. So they will hear both audio and visual uh, confirmation that you are testing and that you're testing in a room by yourself alone in a quiet place. They also added some AI registration features that really cut down on the amount of time you have to spend going through the check-in process. Uh, so most of that will be set up and, and, and done actually prior to testing day, including certain pictures of your work area, your workspace. Um, and then there was also pre-exam system tests. And I cannot stress enough that if you, if you plan to take a test and you plan to do that through online proctoring, run the system test. Run the system test from the equipment that you will be using on testing day do it ahead of time and they may even ask you to do it again there quickly on site just prior to taking your test uh, but that's all for you to have a better experience with your exam being delivered online and so speaking of, of a digital or virtual environment we want to talk about one last last thing here, here today and, and that's digital badging and, and if i could just ask you a question and it'll obviously be a rhetorical question but when is the last time someone was in your office Maybe when was the last time you were in your office? When was the last time that someone looked at the certificate you had hanging on the wall of the office? I'm guessing that the answer to all three of those questions is that it's been quite some time. And digital badging is not brand new. It's been around for, for several years. I think a little over three years or four years here at SAS, we've been using digital badges. And really what digital badges are is a web-enabled version of your credential. So it can be shared through all of your social networks, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Uh, it can be shared as part of your email signature. It can be shared uh, through a link that you build out on your website or, or other places. And that carries with it information or metadata about the certification that you've earned, when you earned it, what the specifics are of that certification. The one here you can see on the screen is a little outdated, a few versions back, but this is uh, shows you um, what it looks like to share your certification online. And then that can be validated in real time by a potential employer uh, or others that would that you would share that information with. So they can click on it and see that that, is, that, that certification is um, in good standing and exactly what versions it's covered and a lot more information that's available in the metadata for those badges. What I like to talk about also though, which is a somewhat underutilized feature, and I don't know that a lot of people understand that it's available until they've earned the badge and then they go out to, to maybe come across that when they set up their badging account, but also available are labor market insights. What I mean by labor market insights are that once you've received your badge, you look towards the bottom of the screen and you, you've, you've clicked on that badge, you're going to see uh, job openings associated with the credential that you've earned. You're going to see locations of those jobs for the credential that you've earned. And again, this is all done through skills and various tagging. So there's a sometimes a loose association, but oftentimes a, a tight enough association that you're going to find jobs that are definitely applicable to your skill set. You'll also see the top employers associated with those jobs. You also see the top related skills. So this might help you also for uh, closing that feedback loop and helping you to understand what other skills might go hand in hand with your existing skills or the skills that you learned while chasing that certification and how you could use those to beef up your resume or move towards the exact job that you want out in the marketplace. And lastly, we also provide information on related certifications or training that would make sense as your next step in your ongoing learning. So if you have a digital badge and you haven't gone out and taken a look at the labor market insights lately, go ahead and do that. Things have changed. They're always updating this. They're always tightening up the algorithms that run to, to tie these back to your certifications. So it's, it's worth reviewing that periodically. 
to see what uh, what other skills might be tying into your existing certifications and existing training badges. So something to do if you're on the process of of earning certification. Well, just know at the end of that process is a digital badge, which is going to help you showcase your accomplishments to employers, as well as help you continue your learning journey through the information that's offered. So with that, I think we're wrapping up this what's new in certification presentation. We're glad that you could join us. We hope that you're enjoying all of SAS Global Forum, and uh, we hope maybe in the future we'll be with you again in person. Uh, but for now, feel free if you have any questions to reach out to us uh, individually, directly, or to uh, send an email to certification at sas.com with any questions you might have, and we'd be glad to answer those for you. So feel free to check out sas.com slash certification for all of the information that we presented today. And uh, we wish you all the best in your learning journey, as well as your certification attempts in the future.